That icy hand traveled fast. We zoomed over trees and dodged bolts of lightning until we came to a house deep in the forest. What a house. It was built of mud, blood, and old bones and bat wings. Here and there you could see a shin bone or a withered claw sticking out of the walls. The roof was made of old rat fur and dead hair. Perched on top were the bones of a long dead alligator. There were no doors or windows in this house. Right away I knew that it had to be the house of a ghost. Ghosts don't need doors or windows. They use the chimney. As we started down the chimney, I heard a hollow voice wailing down below. Where is my hand? I burnt my sweet hand. As soon as we sailed out of that fireplace, I saw her. What a fearsome sight. I got more goosebumps in between my goosebumps. She was huge. A monstrous white ghost. She floated just off the floor and her head nearly touched the ceiling. Her eyes and her mouth were just gaping black holes in her shroud. Her hair was ragged and squiggly. Beside her stood a giant werewolf snarling and snaffling. The ghost lifted an empty sleeve and whispered, The hand floated up to the sleeve and slipped into place. Then the ghost lifted me up to the horrible black holes that were her eyes. You are done, boy. You shall be my very own sweet baby. She moaned and kissed me. Her breath smelled like the wind that blows from a cave full of bats. She hugged me close. Ooh, her shroud smelled even worse, like a toad's underwear. We floated across the room and she turned on her TV set. We'll have some fun until it's time for dinner. Have you ever seen Ghost TV? It's on channel four and a half, and it is awful. I mean, it is the worst ever. First, we looked at the open grave show. It began with a mess of moldy old ghouls popping out of their graves and stumbling over some cows. This made the ghouls angry. They all fetched axes and began to chop each other into pieces. This went on until there was only one ghoul standing on a pile of splintered bones and skulls. He was declared the winner, and a lizard came out and pinned a medal on him. Next, we looked at Mrs. Ghost's favorite program. It was about cooking and was called Feeding Phantom Faces. It opened with a big fat-bellied demon in a tall white hat. He hauled in a big iron pot and showed us how to make soup out of a dead elephant. Ugh. Then an old blue witch taught us how to fry baby toes and eyeballs and bake a knuckle bone pie. While all this was going on, a screaming banshee orchestra was playing music that sounded like truck brakes. Then we saw a commercial for goblin grease. I didn't know that goblins needed grease, but they do. It seems that their knees creak, and it is hard to sneak around houses with creaky knees. So they grease them up before they go spooking kids' houses. Last of all, we looked at the Harry Snuffler Comedy Hour, and I want to tell you that it was about as funny as a broken elbow. You know what hairy snufflers are, don't you? They're just big hairy blobs with lots of teeth and claws and runny noses. On this program, a gang of snufflers went to school and ate up the whole second grade. One snuffler got all the laughs by saying over and over, Who's got the ketchup? <laughs> Mrs. Ghost and the werewolf laughed and giggled and roared. Mrs. Ghost laughed so hard that she dropped me. I never hit the floor. The werewolf gobbled me up in midair. I slid on down and tumbled into the werewolf's stomach. What a mess. I was knee-deep in possum tails, bug fur, lizard claws, and rat teeth. And the smell. Phoo-wee! It was darker down there than the inside of a witch's hat. And I couldn't find any way out. I was a goner for sure. I began to think of my mom and dad in my dog's spot. I would never see them again. I began to bawl like a homeless baby. 
I reached for my handkerchief to dry my tears. What do you think I found in my pocket? The witch's wishbone. I pray that it would work one more time. Bone of wishes, listen to me. At the count of three, I want to be rocking at home with my grandson on my knee. One, two, three. Splock. The wishbone worked, because here I am. Oh, Grandpa, is that story true? You just made it up, didn't you? I don't think so, because I still have this. Would you like to try it? What would you like to be? I'll wish it for you. Uh, not tonight, Grandpa, I said. It's too rainy out. But I put the wishbone in my pocket, and I still got it. One of these days, when I get brave enough, I'm going to try it out. So if some dark night you find a goblin under your bed or a spook in the hall, come right up and shake its hand. It'll only be me, and I've never heard a thing in my life, except a baseball.